Now, now you said you wanted to do comedy since you were six, but you actually started in 1977. And and back then, you were called the Right Reverend Dr. George Wallace? The Right Reverend Dr. George Wallace. Yeah, I wanted to be six years old. I was watching uh, people like Red Skelton as far as Independence, Red Button, Red Fox, Johnny Carson, Richard Pryor, watch people like that. And I would take their jokes back to school, and people would laugh. And anytime you're making people happy, what you going to do? You know, when I see happy people, it makes me happier. I actually started in 1976 in the month of June. Um, me and a little kid, a little Jewish boy, we started together. Uh, my best friend for 43 years, and uh, his name is Jerry Seinfeld. I know you never heard of him, but that's my I never best heard friend. Of him. For, he's, an, he's an idiot. You don't have to know who he is. He's an idiot, okay? I'll tell you more about him later, but just being able to do what you want to do in life is the greatest thing in the world, man. And I teach young kids in college today, make sure you enjoy your life. Just because you get a degree in marketing doesn't mean you got to do statistical analysis the rest of your life. You might enjoy arranging flowers or painting cars, whatever it is. Honor your essence and do what you do, and the money will come. Look at us. We're sitting here doing what we like to do. Isn't that, isn't that great? Just talking, talking shit. Talking shit. That's what I do for a living. And they actually You do a good job, it. too. Yeah, thank you. As do you. I'm one of the best bullshitters ever, so let's make that, let's make that perfectly <laughs> clear. Well, when you first started doing stand-up, I mean, because stand-up looks easy from the outside looking in, but mm -hmm. once you actually are on that stage and, you know, five minutes seems like forever, uh, how did you do in the beginning? Did you kill it to begin with or did you bomb a lot? I never bombed a lot. I, I always had a good time, man, and going on stage. When I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just telling jokes, you know. I was telling joke jokes, which nobody tell. I just put it together, get on stage. But I have a personality that people like, you know, and uh, and if you're having fun, people just want to have fun. And that's what I do. I just go out. Even today, I have a personality I got on stage. I don't do a PC show. I talk about everybody. I don't give a damn who you I had a blind lady come to my show late last night, and I chewed her ass out for coming in late. I said, how the hell are you walking here late? You got somebody to lead and guide your ass around here. I said, look at all these other people in this room. That's what I said to the blind lady. Look at all these other people. And she's standing in the audience. And I said, you ain't that blind either because you're pointing straight at me. And so she said, but let me tell you something. She had so much fun. If you do it right, I'm never going to embarrass anybody because they pay my rent. But she had so much fun at the end of the evening, I had to tell her, you are the best. She said, Mr. Wallace, I just love to laugh. And she said, I love you too. And she was so, I, at the end of the evening, I gave her a copy of my DVD. That's how she was so good. It's a slow ass crowd out here. I gave the blind lady a copy of my DVD. Got to explain the jokes and do the jokes at the same time. Go ahead. Well, I mean, have you ever had hecklers? Very few. I think, and I might be wrong, but I think comedians that have hecklers, they leave a board in their show. There's somewhere in the show where people can come in and heckle. I keep my mm -hmm. show rolling, but if they do come in, I'm ready. You ready? My audience, my audience is so comfortable, sometimes they do talk back to me, but they're in the spirit. I did a show last night with 7,000 people at um, uh, Coney Island, uh, mm. Forbes Amphitheater. People were talking back to me, back and forth. Sometimes, I used to be known as the king of the your mama joke. Some people start talking about my mama, so we'll go back and do that. But it's a comfortable atmosphere. Very seldom do I have um, a heckler. Okay. The king of the your mama jokes. So so what are some of your most vicious your mama jokes that you have in your... In your I don't even remember them. Arsenal. I just used to be the king. Like, like I never met your mama, right? I never met the man. But let me tell you something. I was... <laughs> what's, what's wrong? Listen. But I did meet your mama at the airport and... Uh, you know, she's got a job sniffing luggage. So I used to do the jokes like that and, uh, and do me a favor. Is it true that your mama's teeth are so crooked she's got a job at Home Depot making keys? But I, I don't But I do not do your mama jokes anymore. I know she's so fat, your mama's so fat. The other day she was driving down the street and the police pulled over and says, all right, everybody get out. <laughs> Big fat ass mama. Your mama's so fat when she gets on the elevator, oh, it's going down. Hey, Vlad, your mama's so ugly, she can stop bird shit right in the middle of the air. <laughs> your mama's so ugly, when birds fly over, they fly upside down so they don't have to shit on her. I could, I can, I'm just I'm trying to remember these jokes. <laughs> I'm trying to remember these jokes. Do me a favor. Just tell your mama when you see her that, just tell her they caught that rapist so she can stop sleeping naked at night with the window open. Just, <laughs> All right, I can see now why people don't heckle you at shows. I'm ready to go. And they, you're, I know, you're ready to you know, go. I met your mom at Disneyland. Yeah. I met at Disneyland, and they call her they call her Space Mountain. They named her after Space Mountain. <laughs> She's a good ride, but the line, 
<laughs> oh my God, the line. <laughs> I'm not doing no more. I don't do you. I can't remember your mama jokes anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold right now. Pardon me. Did okay. you catch a cold? Yeah, I got a cold. That's another stupid ass thing. People say I caught a cold. Why would you call, why would you catch a cold? Why don't you just let it go? People saying stupid shit everywhere I go. <laughs> like Jerry Seinfeld told me he's gonna build him a new house and he's gonna build it from the ground up. I said, you know that that'd probably be the best way to start building that house. Well you start with the roof, you're gonna run into some trouble. People just say stupid shit all the time. Matter of fact, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write a whole pad of stupid shit people say. <laughs> when people die, Vlad, they say things like, uh, uh, he dead and gone. Now, what the hell does dead and gone mean? Dead and gone. Anybody ever died and stayed? People just say stupid shit. I met a funeral um, and the preacher said the lady was in a better place and I'm going, she's in a box. Just stupid shit. 